Imagine a 10 year younger version of you moving to Scotland and attending school there. The transition should be easy, right? Both Australia and Scotland speak English. So this should be fine. However, you soon, re soon realise it's not. The culture is different and you realise that people are interpreting what you say the wrong way. Many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students and adults may face the same problem every day, except instead of adapting to a language because of moving to Australia, they adapt because the world moved to Australia. Throughout this presentation, I'll be focusing on Aboriginal language and Indigenous literacy. In particular, I will be analysing the learning gap Indigenous students may face because of Aboriginal Australian as well as the importance of Indigenous literature within schools. I will also be reflecting upon my teaching pedagogies with this thematic area to assist me in the identification of strategies to allow me to enhance my effectiveness in the classroom. So the reason why I chose this thematic area Aboriginal literacy and language is primarily because when I utilise the teacher self-assessment tool on the ATSA website to assist me in the process of my self-reflection, I discovered I needed to improve on standards 1.4 and 2.4. One aspect of standard 2.4 is to demonstrate broad knowledge of understanding and respect for Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander languages. I used to believe this only entailed the traditional languages spoken by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. However, after extensive research, I understand that this involves both traditional language as well as Aboriginal English. Before beginning this assignment, I did not realise that there, were there was a different form of English other than a standard Australian English. I used to believe that everyone either spoke a language other than English or English. As I come from a background where English is not my first language, and sometimes when I communicate orally with others, the phonemics of words or the conjunctions within sentences may become jumbled. Therefore, I'm surprised I did not understand the concept of Aboriginal English sooner. When referring to Aboriginal English, it's not necessarily a different language, but a different dialect of English, the same way American English is different um, to Australian English. Aboriginal English sounds similar to Australian English, but there may be miscommunication because of sem semantic or pragmatic differences. Consequently, words may have a different meaning in Aboriginal English from standard Australian English and different social contexts may also have an effect. Another obvious difference is the phonemics and are different, for example, consonants that are R's, L's, N's, D's and T's those are which you call retroflex sounds. These are sounds that are produced with the tip of the tongue curled back towards the hard palate. So the following slide, um, it provides an example of the difference between Aboriginal English and Standard English and how the language barrier can hinder closing the gap. Please click the link to view the example. Reflecting upon past experiences is difficult as I have not been exposed to any Indigenous Australian students. However, from viewing this video, I can imagine that a problem that could arise for teachers and students is the pragmatics of how language is used. For example, the student or teacher can recognise what the Indigenous Australian is saying. However, the meaning that they are trying to communicate may be different. According to Gallup, Indigenous students within schools are essentially dealing with a complex language system as they are required to consciously correct their dialects as it can be viewed as a mistake by teachers and other students. Before developing strategies to assist Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students communicating in two different dialects, it is proposed by Harrison and Selwood that the most vital and difficult step a teacher can achieve is the identification process. This is difficult as Aboriginal English is stereotypically viewed as sloppy English. However, the identification process can easily be accomplished if teachers understand the students' home life. If the teacher knows the culture of the household, the process of assisting the student bridge to the second variety of English would become a lot easier.
As a pre-service teacher, I believe that it is vital that I do not attempt to erase the students' dialect or language spoken at home. Instead, I should develop a bi-dialectical competence. According to McKay, Hudson and Sapupo, the authors of Nila ESL Band Scales, language is a foundation of literacy development. Therefore, if students are not speaking standard Australian English at home, they have a higher chance of struggling with their literacy development. This statement can be proven as only 36% of Indigenous Year 5 students in very remote areas are at or above national minimum reading standards, compared to the 96% for non-Indigenous students in major cities. This is according to the NAPLAN um, assessment program. Returning to my story of learning English, a key factor that assisted me in communicating proficiently is reading various forms of literature that resonated with me. According to Wooldridge, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students should not have to be separated into a different category. Instead, it should be a part of what is completed in the classroom every day. This can be completed by utilising a literature based orientation focusing on helping Aboriginal English speaking students make um, the connection to standard Australian English. This should not be sep a separate technique or strategy, but a part of a pedagogy underpinning the whole class. The Indigenous Literacy Foundation have derived four simple classroom literacy practices that focus on reconciliation by connecting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders with their culture, while assisting students to make the connection between Standard Australian English and Aboriginal English. These strategies are also created to benefit the entire class, not just Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. So these are Pedagogies of Wonder. This involves adults listening to the wonder of the children about their own history, culture and context and trusting children into research this rich resource. All students can participate in this as we all share a different story. Second one is generative pedagogies. Um, here, culturally safe spaces were created for Indigenous students to engage with their everyday experiences of oppression through writing. This is the only strategy that may not be inclusive to all students. However, Indigenous students are encouraged to share their work if comfortable. Place-based pedagogies. So these take students out of the classroom and into the country and they speak to rangers, teachers, um, community members and um, in a collaborative approach to teaching and learning. And the fourth one is pedagogy is prioritising local Aboriginal voices. This involves listening to voices in the community and understanding the values in cultural elements. This informs students in, with their engagement with a formal educational context. I once assumed that if one could not articulate themselves effectively and properly, they were uneducated. I also believe there was one way to learn English, no matter the ability level or environmental factors. I still do not feel entirely competent to assist a student who speaks Aboriginal English bridge the gap to standard Australian English and still have a very long way to go. However, after completing this assignment, I have become aware of the issue and becoming aware and identifying the problem is a first step to assisting the students with language and literacy development. Thank you. Below is my reference list.